Did you know half the land surface of the earth is arid or desert country, and that man-made deserts are expanding at the alarming rate of approximately 75 square miles each day? This is mostly a result of clearing, overgrazing, and inappropriate agricultural practices on drought-prone land. The continued spread of deserts is affecting climate, soil loss, vegetation, and animal life across broad regions and has serious implications for the planet at large because once established, deserts are very difficult to reclaim. However, each of us can help to reverse the loss of vegetation and improve habitats wherever we live, from Arctic tundra to tropical forests by using the simple natural materials of the earth itself. Whole habitats can be rolled into tiny living models of the earth that contain seeds, soil, and clay minerals. They are called seed balls. Hi, I'm Jim Bones, and I'm going to show you the simplest way I know to make seed balls. Start with one part of mixed seeds, add three parts of compost, mix those well together, add five parts of red powdered clay, Mix that in. Then add two parts of water, a little at a time. Mix that well. So you want to mix it thoroughly, get the mixture to about the texture of bread dough, pinch off little pieces, roll them between the palms of your hands until they're round and smooth. And there you have it, seed balls. It's that simple. After the seed balls are made, they need to dry for about 24 hours, during which they will shrink and harden to protect the seeds and soil humus contained inside. Once dry, they may be stored for several months in a cool, ventilated place or scattered directly on the land at a minimum density of about one per square foot. Since the seeds are already planted, the seed balls can be tossed on the surface and no further cultivation is required. Protected from predators and erosion, they can remain on the ground for months without loss, waiting for seasonal rains to bring them to life. Often up to 80% of broadcast seed is lost to birds, mice, and insects before it can germinate. In one field test conducted on western rangeland, harvester ants alone collected a quarter pound of grass and wildflower seeds from one square yard in less than an hour. To work well, Seed balls need to be used in areas that receive at least 10 to 12 inches of annual precipitation, but the timing of the rains is also important. Three to five inches of rain are required to dissolve the seed balls and begin germination. Continued rains are then needed to promote growth and establish viable root systems.
Light rains may only soften the clay and allow predators like ants to tear the seed balls apart and even dig under them for seeds. So it may be necessary to add a natural repellent such as red chili pepper, catnip, pennyroyal, or peppermint to the seed balls to prevent predation. The amount of repellent added will vary with the type, but about 10% by volume of the amount of soil compost should be sufficient. If you use red chili, wear gloves to avoid irritation. With sufficient rain or irrigation, in about two to three weeks, seed balls will begin to sprout whole communities of grasses, shrubs, trees, and wildflowers, according to the kinds of seeds used. Once they begin to sprout, nature selects the right plants to grow on the site, and in one broadcast, all possible niches are covered. Here at the Elizabeth Rice Winston demonstration site in Big Bend National Park in the Chihuahuan Desert of West Texas, results from reclamation tests on a closed waste dump show how it is possible to establish colonies of native perennial grasses and associated wildflowers on difficult ground, even during periods of relatively low rainfall. The most successful regrowth occurred in small imprints or pits made with a hoe to collect natural rainfall and provide protection from dry desert winds. You can use these same strategies to add biological diversity to your environment or revegetate barren land. It isn't hard to do. So imagine a greener world the way you would like it to be and then help to make it so with seed balls. And now my young friends Mariah, Rachel, and Max are going to tell you all about how to make and use seed balls. This is a model of the world that's made out of paint and metal, and it can't grow anything. This is a model of the world that's made out of seeds, compost, and clay, and it can. The recipe for making seed balls is one part of your seed mixture, which can be grass seeds and wildflowers from your natural habitat. Three parts of natural compost containing one-celled organisms, fungi, insect eggs, and other living things. And then five parts red clay from, from a river or creek bed. All of these things make up the earth. Now the only thing that's missing is the water. Now it's time to show you how to make the seed ball. We'll take one part of the seed mixture, three parts of your local compost, and you need to make sure before you add the red clay to mix the compost and the seed mixture very well. Make sure that it's mixed thoroughly. Now, after the seeds and the, com and the compost are mixed, it's time to add the five parts of red clay. This red clay you can find in the river beds after a thunderstorm or after the, after the creek bed dries out. You can pick up the little flakes, brush off the sand underneath, and you'll have the purest form of clay that you can get. Red clay is preferably the best because it has the more nutrients and minerals. Clays like porcelains aren't very good because they're more like sterile clays. Now that our dry ingredients are thoroughly mixed, it's time to add our two parts water. The water you should add gradually, a little bit at a time. You don't want the seeds to get too wet, or else they'll start germinating. It's almost like mixing dough for bread. You don't want to add too much water, or else it'll get too soggy. But you have to make sure that you add enough, or else it'll be too dry.
you have to make sure that the texture is not too dry, almost sticky, kind of like sculpting clay if you've ever worked with it. You should know how it feels. Once again, we're adding the water gradually so as not to make it too sticky all at once. Seed balls can be used almost anywhere, well pretty much actually anywhere, as long as the seeds are used to being with each other. For example, if you took two diff completely alien kinds of seeds and put them together in a seed ball, it would be hard for them to work together to enhance their environment. We're almost to the point where we should start making the seed balls. When making the seed balls, you don't want them to be too big. They need to be about a half inch in diameter or about the size of a marble. As you roll the seed ball, if you look closely at it, in the clay, there are little, almost snowflake patterns that are far apart. And as you roll it, they'll be squished together and become closer together. So the seed ball won't crack to let any insects, ants, for instance, carry the seeds away that it contains. As you're working with the seed ball mix, you, this, the mix may dry out and you may need to add a little bit of water. It's best to have a spray cup, but just hit, spreading it on with your hands is also fine. You want the seed balls to be as round as you can make them, so that they won't have any cracks. But if you're spreading them out over a steep s hillside, it's better to have them somewhat squished, so that they won't be as able to roll down the mountain and all gather in the same spot. In scattering the seeds, the seed balls, they need to be at least one per square foot. Each seed ball contains 20 to 60 seeds. As it rains, the clay will break down and let the seeds settle into the ground. It should take about three to five inches of rain, about which depends on how it comes. If it's all in one heavy shower, it'll break down faster. But if it's in light sprinkles, then it should take longer. The seed ball, when it's hard, the outer shell protects it from insects and birds. And then when it gets wet, it will, the nutrients will sink into the ground around the seed and help it with its nutritious value. It also acts as a blanket containing minerals and vitamins which it needs before it starts to grow. Seed balls don't take up much of your time. You could make well over a hundred in just one evening. The best thing about seed balls is that once they're hard, they're really already planted. You don't need to stop the, and take the time to dig holes and water and do all the hassle of regular gardening. You can just scatter them out and they're already planted. Also, seed balls can be used almost anywhere, by rivers, grasslands, jungles, and it, almost anywhere you can think of, desert. Nature really is our best teacher. Our ancestors learned most that they know from nature. And even now that we've come so far, we might think that we've learned everything that nature has to offer, but it always has more surprises.
just a couple of hours, these young people have helped to restore diversity and health to their local habitat. You can do it too. Making seed balls can be a wonderful project for schools and social groups that brings the community together to improve the conditions of the land you live on. Making seed balls by hand is the most energy efficient way, especially if a lot of people are willing to lend their hands. But if you need to cover a large area at one time, a faster way is available. The Von Bachmeyer rotary drum enables you to make enough seed balls in one day to cover an acre or more. I'll show you how it's done. So first, make a batch of dry working materials consisting of one part mixed seeds, three parts of living compost. Mix those well together just to deter those insects and mice and birds that might want to rob your seeds before they can get started, we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of ground red chili pepper. This will make it a little less palatable for them to go in and harvest those seeds before they're ready to sprout. Next, we're going to add five parts of red powdered clay. Mix that thoroughly. Now we're ready to start the drum. By working with the rotary motion of the drum and the natural tendency of clay particles to ball up when wet, it is possible to produce seed balls in a more or less continuous process. The dry materials are introduced into the drum, water is sprayed on the mix, and as the seed balls grow to the desired half inch diameter size, they're harvested with a wire mesh tool. This allows the smaller seed balls to remain in the drum until they have reached full size. Wet seed balls are simply tossed onto a tarp or sheet to dry and harden for about 24 hours, after which they're ready to scatter or store until you have enough to cover the area under consideration. Because they contain soil compost with microorganisms, seed balls help sprouting plants establish strong roots even in depleted soils. In addition to protecting the seeds and compost during dry times, the clay also provides essential mineral nutrients the young plants need for healthy growth. So it is important to use red or brown clays with the greatest mineral diversity, not white or gray clays. If you do not have a local source for clay, you can buy red powdered clay like that used to make flower pots. Avoid inhaling the fine dust. It can damage your lungs. This continuous drum operation is adapted from a method developed by Masanobu Fukuoka, an 80-year-old Japanese microbiologist and farmer who told me how to make and use seed balls. He has been developing these natural farming techniques for more than 50 years to grow fruits, vegetables, and grains without cultivation and to help restore damaged lands around the world in all kinds of habitats. While describing them, Mr. Fukuoka repeatedly told me that making seed balls is easy. Understanding the right associations of seeds to include is the difficult part. Plants have preferences about which other plants they like to grow near. So an awareness of compatible gills or companion plants will help you choose the right combinations. You can make different species of seed balls, each containing the best associations of seeds for varying local habitats to minimize competition. He also said including the microbial organisms needed by the plants in the form of concentrates or living soil material is absolutely essential. Be sure to include natural soil samples in your compost mix to provide the proper diversity of microbiotic farmers that really do the work of making soil fertile. Because of the power of seed balls to introduce plants into an environment, you must not use invasive, destructive, or non-native plants. It is also best to gather seeds from your local area if possible, as they will already be adapted to your climate and soil. Be patient with seed balls. They work at nature's own deliberate pace. Mr. Fukuoka advised, Sow seed balls with a childlike mind whenever, wherever, without judging the first year. During the second year, 
bugs, mice, or birds will carry the seeds from the plants and sow them naturally for you. So in the third year, you will get a natural design. If you do not think too much, just make seed balls and observe carefully. Nature will teach you all you need to know. Well, this is it, the Von Bachmeyer drum, developed by Alfred Von Bachmeyer of Tezuki, New Mexico. This will enable you to make an acre's worth of seed balls in one day. That's over 40,000 seed balls. This is what you need if you're going to cover a lot of area in a small time. Just harvest them, and toss them out there. Well, that's it, folks. It's been a long day, but now that you know how to make seed balls, I want you to get out there and make them and cover those prairies and cover those forests and cover those deserts. Make those riparian areas shine. Help the kids of this world grow plants so they'll have a beautiful place to live long after you and I are gone. It's in their hands, you know, and it's a race between education and annihilation. So let's do our part. Let's see what we can do to leave the world a greener place than when we came into it. Thanks very much.